How do we solve our patients' hard-to-solve medical problems? Our doctors and specialists collaborate, sharing their vast knowledge and Mayo Clinic's unique expertise. It's this working together that helps solve our patients' hard-to-solve medical problems. Monument Health, proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. As a Venture Communications customer, you're ready for tomorrow. Where you live, the world's at your fingertips through a fast and reliable fiber optic internet connection. You can choose the RushNet broadband speed you want, all the way up to a gigabit. And your own team of technical experts are ready to help 24-7. Change your world with RushNet high-speed internet. Be ready for tomorrow. Get connected. Call Venture Communications today. Are you looking to steal a deal on your next vehicle? Whether you're looking for a car, truck, or SUV, shop from over 1,000 vehicles at MenholtAuto.com. Menholt Auto Group is a proud supporter of the South Dakota State Baseball Tournament and would like to wish good luck to all participating players and teams. Have a great game and knock one out of the park. From Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda. All three stores conveniently located off I-90 Exit 60, Rapid City. It seems around here every town is a sports town. And why not? Sports were important to us growing up, and we want the same for our kids. To get involved, to compete, because that's how kids learn to lead. And why Farmers Union Insurance supports these programs. They know sports aren't just about building skill and strength, but about building character. Farmers Union Insurance. They don't just protect our community, they invest in it. If you have seen our lot at Harry K, then you know we're having a record month. We are in need of vehicles, and a lot of them. That's right, we won't send you those mailers to confuse you. We'll just ask you to bring your vehicle in to have us look at it. No games, no gimmicks, just good old-fashioned honesty. Shop us first, shop us last. Either way, come see Harry K. Family, friends, and Fords, in that order. Every home tells a story. Wherever you live, whatever your style, express yourself with Ashley Home Store. So many styles to help tell your story and create your unique dream home. Ashley Home Store, this is home. For most people, every day isn't about moving and managing money. Most of us have bigger things to tackle, jobs to do. Money shouldn't be the focus of your day. Our job is making sure it stays that way. Questions answered, time saved, confidence restored, and every day improved. First Interstate Bank, built for you. At Ashley Home Store, when we say we got it, we really mean it. We've got all the popular styles for every room in your home, as well as some of the highest quality and customer ratings in the industry. Not to mention, we've also got the top mattress brands like Sealy, Tempur-Pedic, and Ashley Sleep. And payroll deduction financing available so you can take time to pay. So come in today and see why your Pierre Ashley Home Store is the top choice for everything home. Hurry in. We're located on South Garfield Avenue in Pierre. This is home. For most people, every day isn't about moving and managing money. Most of us have bigger things to tackle. Money shouldn't be the focus of your day. Our job is making sure it stays that way. Questions answered, time saved, confidence restored, and every day improved. First Interstate Bank, built for you. Visit us at firstinterstate.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. As a Venture Communications customer, you're ready for tomorrow. Where you live, the world's at your fingertips through a fast and reliable fiber optic internet connection. You can choose the RushNet broadband speed you want, all the way up to a gigabit. 
And your own team of technical experts are ready to help 24-7. Change your world with RushNet high-speed internet. Be ready for tomorrow. Get connected. Call Venture Communications today. Are you looking to steal a deal on your next vehicle? Whether you're looking for a car, truck, or SUV, shop from over 1,000 vehicles at menholtauto.com. Menholt Auto Group is a proud supporter of the South Dakota State Baseball Tournament and would like to wish good luck to all participating players and teams. Have a great game and knock one out of the park. From Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda. All three stores conveniently located off I-90 Exit 60, Rapid City. Shop local with Burke and Gregory Building Centers, your hometown hardware stores, specializing in everything from finding the right drill bit to building your dream home. The crew at Burke and Gregory Building Centers take pride in customer service and are always available to help with any project, big or small. They offer top-of-the-line flooring and cabinetry, a large inventory of rental items, quality Pittsburgh paint, and so much more. Follow them on Facebook and shop online anytime at bgbuildingcenter.com. We've got a history of serving you. A history of family-owned community banking that goes back over 100 years. We grew up here. We're local. And local ownership means local decisions. It means our products are tailored to meet local needs. We take pride in our support of many local organizations and encourage community growth through charitable contributions and employee involvement. First Fidelity Bank. Member FDIC. First class banking on a first name basis. Life's an adventure filled with excitement, challenges, and achievements. Farmers Union Insurance can provide you the safety net to keep you moving toward your goals and enjoying life's rewards. With multiple locations across the state, Farmers Union Insurance agents provide quick quotes and professional services you deserve. Since 1948, Farmers Union Insurance has focused on insuring the people of South Dakota. From the most remote quarter section to the busiest intersection, Farmers Union Insurance, insuring a brighter time tomorrow. The Gola Buffalo Casino at Lower Brule is proud of our area youth for their competitive spirit and participation in the various high school activities. It takes dedication and commitment to be the best you can be. It's all about sportsmanship and not whether you win or lose, but how you play the game. The Gola Buffalo Casino is your winning destination for great food and more ways to win. More often, our youth, our future. We at the Gola Buffalo Casino say thanks for all you do. Right now is a great time to be planning for the next growing season. Fall fertilizer application can give your crops a strong start in the spring. Because the nutrients available and needed in each field vary, your Agtegra agronomist can help determine your specific nutrient needs and the benefits of applying them now. To optimize your inputs for next year's crop, contact your Agtegra agronomist for details or visit agtegra.com today. At Monument Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, we are here to help you make your comeback. Our team is standing by to diagnose and treat your injury with some of the most advanced treatment options available and same-day appointments. Monument Health practitioners work closely with our therapists and physicians in communities throughout the Black Hills with locations in Rapid City and Spearfish. Visit monument.health slash orthopedics for more information. That's monument.health slash orthopedics for more information. Harry K. Ford, a winner, is proud to be your local low price dealer. We promise to always be your most competitive local dealer on all vehicles used or new. We specialize in getting you the exact vehicle you want and can afford no matter the make and model. Those other guys don't do that. Come see why so many people have made the change to the all new Harry K. Ford in winter. Family, friends, and Fords. In that order. Dunning. They got a, a single, they got a bunt, they got a hit batsman, they loaded the bases, and the hero was Jared Zenz, their number nine man in the order. He delivered a two-run walk-off single to the left field in the bottom of the ninth inning, and the defending champions are still alive. An eight to seven win for Alexandria over the Lusterville Bronx. So that brings us to this game right here. The Platt Killer Tomatoes are the home team. And on the mound, taking his warm-ups, no not from Platt, but from Dimmick Emery and a Mitchell native, 
guy I've known since he was uh, about nine years old, Phil Johnson. They have picked up Phil Johnson as a pickup player, and uh, he will be on the mound. Phil Johnson can throw a lot of innings, so he never seems to get tired out there, and they're going to count on him to get him through. He will face Trevor Olson, a left-hander uh, for the Volga Cormorants here this Getting evening. Let's give you a lineups real quickly second as Volga gets ready two, to go. Josh, Josh Nelson. Nelson will lead off second baseman, followed by Jake Alt, the third baseman. Zach Pitts bats third. He's the first baseman. Austin Bicey, that might be a familiar name to people. We'll talk about Austin, the uh, left fielder. He will hit in the cleanup spot as we get the first pitch first down low from Phil 5 Johnson. 5.28 p.m. And we got low 80 temperatures. Beautiful night here at Cadwell Park. Johnson ready again. The delivery is a little bit low, 2-0 and here to Josh Nelson. Got through Sonnenberg, the center fielder, Parker Pitts, DH number six. Cole Gross, the right fielder, batch number seven as we get a called strike. Lane Lucas, the catcher, gets number eight. And the shortstop, Nick Strassward, will back in the number nine spot. And again, Trevor Olson will pitch. Phil Johnson winds, delivers. Here's a chopper down to the first baseline. Takes kind of a funny hop, but right to Ryan Allen. He's going to run over and step on the bag. And we've got one away. Yeah, took kind of a funny hop on Ryan Allen. Hit right on the edge of the uh, infield grass there and bounced up about shoulder high. But uh, good glove to haul it in. So Josh Allen retired on a uh, ground ball to first base. Unassisted. And here is the third baseman, Jake Arlts. By the way, the Volga Cormorants are in the uh, royal blue jerseys, the white pants. They've got a little uh, blue piping down the side of those pants as well. And the Killer Tomatoes, what else would it be, of course, but red. Yep, the red jerseys out there with the black and white trim, except for the pitcher, Phil Johnson, who is in the all-white of the Dimmick Emery Raptors. Pitch on the way, line shot, but right at the shortstop, and Richard Sternberg is right there. He has to drop to one knee, but Sternberg will make the catch. Jake Arlt hit the ball hard, but a line out, and quickly two down here for Volga in the top half of the first inning. Glad to have you along here on Cool 98.3 Mitchell. And don't forget live ticket TV as well. You can watch these ball games on your home computer by going to liveticket.tv. Uh, pay for view. All the games are on. You can buy the whole tournament and, uh, and watch the whole tournament if you can't make it here to Cadwell Park. Johnson ready. Another foul right side. And it's quickly no balls, two strikes to Zach Pitts. The first baseman hits a 267 on the, the year. If we have time here, we'll give you the defensive set for Platt right after this pitch, but we don't because it's a swing and a miss in strike three. Phil Johnson of Dimmick Emery works a great top half of the first inning here for the Platt Keller Tomatoes. Gets a ground out, a line out, and a strikeout. So Volga going in order, one, two, three. We'll go to the bottom half of the first inning. Volga nothing, Platt coming to bat on Cool 98.3. At Ashley Home Store, when we say we got it, we really mean it. We've got all the popular styles for every room in your home, as well as some of the highest quality and customer ratings in the industry. Not to mention, we've also got the top mattress brands like Sealy, Tempur-Pedic, and Ashley Sleep. And payroll deduction financing available so you can take time to pay. So come in today and see why your Pierre Ashley Home Store is the top choice for everything home. Hurry in. We're located on South Garfield Avenue in Pier. This is home. For most people, every day isn't about moving and managing money. Most of us have bigger things to tackle. Money shouldn't be the focus of your day. Our job is making sure it stays that way. Questions answered, time saved, confidence restored, and every day improved. First Interstate Bank, built for you. Visit us at firstinterstate.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. As a Venture Communications customer, you're ready for tomorrow. Where you live, the world's at your fingertips through a fast and reliable fiber optic internet connection. You can choose the RushNet broadband speed you want, all the way up to a gigabit. And your own team of technical experts are ready to help 24-7. Change your world with RushNet high-speed internet. Be ready for tomorrow. Get connected. Call Venture Communications today things off against left-handed pitcher Trevor Olson 
Uh, we talked with uh, Austin Ficey of Volga uh, here prior to the ball game, and uh, he said Olsen's got a good live fastball, a lot of movement on it. He throws a curveball there, and it will miss and go to two balls and no strikes to uh, Biting Boss, the leadoff batter. Richard Sternberg will bat number two, and then the catcher Hunter Hewitt will bat number three. Platt, the home team, in the third base dugout. Here's a called strike at the knees, taken all the way. Biting Boss, and uh, two and one is the, uh, the count. Biden boss, 68 official at bats, 19 base hits on the year. He rips one base hit left side and out into left field. There's the start Platt is looking for. Biden boss on it first with nobody away. And now Richard Sternberg, the uh, shortstop, hitting at 351. Nice season for, uh, for Sternberg. Sternberg comes in 77 at bats, 27 base hits. Got eight runs batted in on the year, scored 16 runs himself. A little bit later in the uh, order here, we're going to see Grant Lang far and away, the number one RBI man. The left-hander Olsen delivers, and that's outside for ball one. Biden Boss can run, not at first base. We'll see how Platt wants to uh, play this here, if they... Uh, Want to get him down to second or just going to play it straight up? No bunting so far. And it's a fly ball hit out to medium deep right field. Cole Gross drops the ball. It was right at him and he drops the ball. He was fighting the sun, but it hit him right in the glove and dropped in front of him. Big break for Platt. Hunter Hewitt. So two men on with nobody out. That should have been a routine fly ball, but uh, lost in the sun by the right fielder Cole Gross. They are going to score that as a base hit for Richard Sternberg. So Biden Boss goes down to second base, Sternberg at first, and now Hunter Hewitt will step in, the uh, the catcher, hitting a 264 on the year, and you still got a possibility here of maybe laying down a bunt, but no, Hewitt is going to keep that bat back, and uh, he'll take a curveball outside for ball one. Well, easy one, two, three inning in the top of the first for Platt, and now two men to uh, to get it going on base with nobody out. Olsen's pitch, low and inside, and makes it two balls and no strikes. Hunter Hewitt, 72 at bats, 19 base hits for that 264 batting average. Seven runs batted in, scored 14 runs. Himself on the year. Fastball comes in, and that's a strike at the knees. So two balls and one strike. Grant Lang, the guy we talked about a little bit ago, who's had a really, really nice season. Waiting on deck, the uh, the center fielder. Little bit of a breeze here tonight. Again, temperatures in the low 80s. Kind of blowing out toward left field. And here's a ball ripped to left field corner. It's going to go all the way to the wall. They will wave the first run across. Second runner will hold up at third base, but it's a stand-up double for Hunter Hewitt. And Platt jumps out in front by a score of one to nothing. And now runners at second and third, and still nobody out. So they have come out here swinging the bats. Single by Beitenbaugh, single by Sternberg, and now the double to the left field corner by Hewitt. And here is Grant Lang stepping in, the left-handed hitter with a 357 batting average. First pitch to him, a check swing. It's a roller out in front of the plate. Catcher is going to have to throw to first base, and they get the out at first, but a run is going to score. Kind of a swinging bunt, I guess, the best way to put that by Grant Lang. I think he wanted to pull his bat back, but he just couldn't get it out of the way in time. So he'll be thrown out at first base by the catcher, but it still is an RBI for Grand Lang as Sternberg will come and score. And it's two to nothing, the Killer Tomatoes. And now here's the pitcher, Phil Johnson. And Phil is always a good hitter, hitting at about 350 on the year. He's had many, many multiple hit games for the Demigemi Raptors. Ground ball towards second. The runner from third is coming home. They're gonna go to first. They get the out, but another run scores. So they have cleared the bases off as Hunter Hewitt comes home from third. And that'll be an infield ground out RBI for Phil Johnson. Three to nothing plot here in the bottom half of inning number one. Two outs now, bases empty. And Hayden Kuiper, the second baseman, will step in. 235 hitter on the year is Hayden. He'll take a called strike at the knees. Where's number one on that uh, red jersey of the Killer Tomatoes? 
Have you thought about what a cormorant is yet? I will tell you next half inning, by the way. Curveball strike two on the inside corner from the left-hander Trevor Olson. This Volga team is made up of a lot of young guys. I mean, really young guys, mostly uh, college-age guys, but no South Dakota State players, and you might think that'd be the case. A couple of guys from Minnesota who just didn't feel that Minnesota was going to play amateur baseball, so they were looking for a team and uh, hooked on. Here's a hard hit ball, base hit again in the left field. Hayden Kuyper sends one past the third baseman. Big hitting inning here for Platt. Four base hits now. Three singles and a double. Platt, the first baseman, number 10. So again, they've got a man on first in Kuyper with two away. And here comes the first baseman, Ryan Allen, stepping in. Ryan hitting at a buck 80 overall on the year. Takes a look down at the uh, third base coaching box here. See if anything's on with two away. And nothing yet. And he swings and misses at the uh, the first pitch for strike one. But you couldn't ask for any better start here than what we've got for uh, Todd Strand's team. Now we're going to get a pop-up right side. Let's see who wants it. Looks like the second baseman calling out on the grass. And Josh Four Nelson will take it the for the third inning. out of the Three inning. Runs. So Ryan Four Allen hits. popping out. But the Tomatoes come through with three runs on four base hits. There were no errors. One man left on base. We've completed one inning here at the 88th Annual State Amateur Baseball Tournament. It's plot three, Volga, nothing on Cool 98.3. For most people, every day isn't about moving and managing money. Most of us have bigger things to tackle, jobs to do. Money shouldn't be the focus of your day. Our job is making sure it stays that way. Questions answered, time saved, confidence restored, and every day improved. First Interstate Bank, built for you. How do we solve our patients' hard-to-solve medical problems? Our doctors and specialists collaborate, sharing their vast knowledge and Mayo Clinic's unique expertise. It's this working together that helps solve our patients' hard-to-solve medical problems. Monument Health, proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. Well, agronomic advice and great products too at Agronomy Plus West Highway 16 in Mitchell. Phil Johnson of Demick Emery delivers the first pitch. It's outside for ball one to right-handed hitting Austin Bicey. Mr. Famous Austin Bicey. Ground ball slowly hit to short. That's a nice play coming up. Fielding at Richard Sternberg in the glove and the throw away in one big motion from the edge of the infield grass and Bicey is retired quickly for the first out of the inning. That's a big out because Austin hitting at 462 on the year. The reason we know Austin Bicey, former Dakota Wesleyan basketball player, but here's maybe why you know Austin Bicey. He is the guy that was all over the social media as a strike comes in to Tyson Sonnenberg, the center fielder. A year ago at the College Baseball World Series, when he was in left field and a home run was hit. You know what I'm talking about? Ball way up high. He's going to go all the way to the backstop. One and one here to Sonnenberg. Yeah, he's the guy that held a beer in one hand, reached up with the other hand, and caught the home run ball, and then promptly chugged that beer down. And, uh, I mean, it was all over every television network and... Uh, Every place you could find on the internet, that's the Austin Bicey. He now works, by the way, at South Dakota State University in their sports information uh, department. You talk about your 15 seconds of fame, now more than 15 seconds for Bicey. Yeah. 2-1, the account. High fly ball. This is pretty deep to left field. Given chase, it's in the gap, and it is going to be gone. A home run. Tyson Sonnenberg. Just to the left of the 374 sign in left center field. He hit that a long way. Sonnenberg, the center fielder, gets Volga on the board. 
It is now a three to one lead for Platt. Now that ball just kind of carried. There is a little bit of a breeze that is blowing out toward left field. Nothing strong though. I mean, maybe a 10 to 15 mile an hour at the, the most. He just hit that ball extremely well. Here's a swing and a miss now by Parker Pitts. He is the designated hitter wearing a different colored uniform, but he's not a pickup player. He is a Legion player uh, for Volga. And he swings and misses, and now he takes a cold strike as well. So quickly 0-2 on Parker Pitts. He batted 290 on the year, and he'll foul one back and out of play to keep it no balls and two strikes. All right, let's get to the question of the day. Volga Cormorants as Johnson delivers. Well, let's take this pop up first on the infield. Who wants it? Sternberg, the shortstop, right by the second base bag. He'll dig it for out number two of the inning. Pitts pops out. That'll bring up the right fielder, Cole Gross. So your Cormorants is known as an attack bird. It is a long-billed bird that lives up in the cliffs, like in California, and dives for its food into the water, known as an attack bird that has, as they put it, a very voracious appetite as well. So there you are. That is a cormorant, the team nickname of uh, Volga. Call strike outside corner, quickly 0-2 to Cole Gross, the, uh, the right fielder. Two outs, nobody on base here for Volga. This one misses outside and low, but they're on the board here in the second inning on a Tyson Sonnenberg. Home run over the left center field fence, but they still trail it by a score of three to one. Phil Johnson, the right-hander winds, delivers, swing and a miss for strike three. That will be the second strikeout of the game for Phil Johnson, and that'll do it for Volga here in the top half of the uh, the second inning. Again, the one run comes across on the solo home run by Sonnenberg. We'll go to the bottom of the second inning. It's Platt three, Volga one here on Cool 98.3. Are you looking to steal a deal on your next vehicle? Whether you're looking for a car, truck, or SUV, shop from over 1,000 vehicles at menholeauto.com. Menhol Auto Group is a proud supporter of the South Dakota State Baseball Tournament and would like to wish good luck to all participating players and teams. Have a great game and knock one out of the park from Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda. All three stores conveniently located off I-90 Exit 60, Rapid City. Shop local with Burke and Gregory Building Centers, your hometown hardware stores, specializing in everything from finding the right drill bit to building your dream home. The crew at Burke and Gregory Building Centers take pride in customer service and are always available to help with any project, big or small. They offer top-of-the-line flooring and cabinetry, a large inventory of rental items, quality Pittsburgh paint, and so much more. Follow them on Facebook and shop online anytime at bgbuildingcenter.com. Come back here to Cadwell Park. Let's remind you that when you want to find out what's going on in Platt and in Charles Biggs County, the place to go is the Platt Enterprise. That's right. Platt Enterprise bringing you all the local happenings. You're never out of the loop. You know what's going on. Full of information. And be sure to read the column, Sharon, Sharon alike. Platt Enterprise wishing good luck to the Killer Tomatoes and all the area teams. And so far, yeah, good luck to Platt. They're up 3-1 to one here as we go to the bottom half of the second inning. Derek Sukup, the third baseman, will uh, lead it off. Derek hitting at 340 on the air, right-handed hitter. Fastball comes in from left-hander Trevor Olson, and that's in there for a strike, one and one. Tate Sibyl on deck, the left fielder, and then uh, we'll go to the top of the order. Michael Beitenboss due up. There's a swing and a miss at a low breaking pitch, and it's one ball and two strikes to Derek Sukup. Platt jumped on Mr. Olson. In the uh, first inning, Beitenbaugh single, Sternberg single, Hewitt a double. And here's a pop-up right side toward the first base dugout. It looks like there's going to be a play, and there is. The first baseman, Zach Pitts, over. He had room to make the, uh, the catch in front of the Volga dugout. First base side, so Sukup down for the first out of the inning. And here is Tate Sybil. Where's number 21 on the red jersey? The left fielder hitting a 221 on the year coming into the uh, the ball game. Left-hander Olson ready, nice curveball, swing and a miss. 
Well, after the Beitenbaugh Sternberg singles, the Hewitt double, then Grant Lang brought in a run on a little infield chopper, and then Phil Johnson grounded out. He drove in another run. Hunter Hewitt knocked in the first run, the RBI, when he hit his double. So three runs on the board for Platt. Volga got one back in the top of the second. 0-2 pitch on the way, swing and a miss for strike three. That was quick. Three straight curveballs by Trevor Olson. And Tate Sybil will go down. That is the first strikeout of the ball game for Trevor Olson. And now we'll go back to the top of the order. He wears number 75, Michael Beitenbaugh. 279 batting average on the year for the Keller Tomatoes. Fly ball hit out toward left. Coming up, coming up. Not able to get there is Austin Bicey, the left fielder, so it's going to fall in for a base hit. He had played Bike Boss pretty deep out there. Tried to come up and get it, just couldn't, and Bike Boss got his second single of the ball game. So, got a runner with two outs, and that will bring up Richard Sternberg here once again. As we said, singled back in the first inning, last inning, and uh, came in to score a run. Left-handed pitcher Olsen looking right at the runner at first, comes in, called strike on a fastball. Yeah, temperatures in the low 80s, nice partly cloudy sky, beautiful night here. The flag in center field, just a little bit blowing out toward maybe left center field, slight wind. Here's a ground ball, hit out toward short, takes a nice big hop. They'll throw across the diamond and make the play for the final out of the inning. That's Four Nick Strasburg, the, the Volga shortstop, throwing out Richard Sternberg. And that'll do it for the killer. Tomatoes here in the second. No runs. One hit the single by Biden Boss. One man left on base. Two innings in the book here at the 88th Annual State Amateur. The score remains Platt 3, Volga 1 on Cool 98.3. As a Venture Communications customer, you're ready for tomorrow. Where you live, the world's at your fingertips through a fast and reliable fiber optic internet connection. You can choose the RushNet broadband speed you want, all the way up to a gigabit. And your own team of technical experts are ready to help 24-7. Change your world with RushNet high-speed internet. Be ready for tomorrow. Get connected. Call Venture Communications today. Are you looking to steal a deal on your next vehicle? Whether you're looking for a car, truck, or SUV, shop from over 1,000 vehicles at menholeauto.com. Menhol Auto Group is a proud supporter of the South Dakota State Baseball Tournament and would like to wish good luck to all participating players and teams. Have a great game and knock one out of the park from Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda. All three stores conveniently located off I-90 Exit 60, Rapid City. Too many warm ups. So it's about three pitches. Says, let's go. Throw that ball down to second base. And they do just that as we get ready to go to the top of the, uh, the third inning. It'll be the catcher, Lane Lucas. He bats in the number eight spot. But boy, he's got a big batting average. How about 474 on the year? Then Nick Strasburg will be uh, coming up next, the number nine man in the order. Johnson, slider outside for ball one. Taking the signs from Hunter Hewitt behind the uh, the plate comes fastball. It's up high, two balls and no strikes. Around the infield, by the way, Ryan Allen at first base, Hayden Kuiper at second, Richard Sternberg the shortstop, Derek Sukup at third, and here's a ball hit right through the hole and out into left field for a base hit. Yeah, Lane Lucas with that uh, 400 plus batting average and looked like it right there as he uh, smoked that ball between third and short. So leadoff man here for Volga on in the uh, third inning. And now the shortstop, Nick Strasburg. The shortstop, number nine, Nick Strasburg. Only batting 167 on the year. Uh, you wonder if maybe he's going to be laying down a uh, bunt here. Long look down at third base. Coaching box, Josh Nelson is the... Uh, the coach, the manager, Johnson delivers, doesn't show bunt, and he takes a strike at the knees. First base for Volga, number 11, Austin Chase. Yeah, never took the uh, the bat off his shoulder. We got a courtesy runner, Austin Case, for Volga, for the catcher, Lane Lucas. So Case will uh, will do the running. There's a bunt attempt, but it's going to be fouled on the uh, first base line. So changed his mind. They took a look at one pitch. It was in there for a strike. They say, uh, let's try and bunt it on the second pitch. But 
foul ball. Now you got a decision. 0-2. Oh do you keep bunting or do you let Mr. Strasburg hit away? Case will take his lead at first with nobody out. Johnson looking in for the sign and ready. Here it comes. Fastball. Strike three. Call. Nice pitch. Boy, that was almost an unhittable pitch there. Fastball right at the knees, right on the very outside corner of the plate. The, the uh, right-handed batter. Strikeout number three for Phil Johnson, the Dimmick Emery Raptor. And now Josh Nelson, who grounded out the first base unassisted, the leadoff man, steps in and a call strike on the inside corner. By the way, Mike Sarda from Huron is our home plate umpire for this game. We've got Dan Lund and Dan Edler on the bases. Swing and a miss, runners going. Here's the throw down a second. Ooh, they might have had a chance and it skipped out of the glove of Hayden Kuyper, the second baseman who was coming to take the throw. That looked like a really good throw by Hunter Hewitt. It was about waist high, but looked like it was right on the bag. And uh, for some reason, Kuyper reached out and it just kind of popped out of his gloves. So called a stolen base for Lane Lucas. So now he's down at second base with one out. And Nelson waiting the pitch here from uh, Phil Johnson. Going to try and keep the runner close at second. Ball is going to be sliced foul over the first base dugout. Not a play. And the young kids down there chasing the ball. 50 cent foul balls. Some of these games you can make yourself some pretty good money chasing those foul balls here at uh, Cadwell Park. Crowd still arriving here for this uh, evening session. We had, a, we had a nice crowd, of course, with Parkston and Alexandria playing this afternoon. There's a cold strike three. Nice breaking pitch by Phil Johnson. Hits the outside corner to the right-handed batter. For the corner end, the That's two outs on the inning, and for Johnson now, his second strikeout of this inning as well, fourth of the, uh, the ball game. So Lane Lucas, who led the inning off with a single, is still at second base now with two outs. And Jake Arlt, A-R-L-T, the third baseman, will step in. Hit the ball hard, but he lined it right to the shortstop. Richard Sternberg back in the first inning. Righty against righty. Johnson delivers. Swing and a miss. Phil's looking sharp uh, so far on the mound. He's got his curveball going in there for strikes. And when he's got that going, he's uh, got a pretty decent fastball. Uh, makes for a nice combination for Phil Johnson. Now he's going to step off the rubber and take a little further look behind him there at, uh, at second base where Lane Lucas is trying to get a big walking lead here with two outs. Plot out in front by a score of 3-1. to one. They played three runs right away on four base hits in the first inning. Johnson ready. Comes with a breaking pitch. Strike call again on the inside corner. He's pitching ahead of the batters. And again, he's ahead on Mr. Art Arlts, rather. No balls and two strikes. Jake, a 318 hitter on the year. Johnson's pitch coming in. Fly ball, short right field. Coming up on it. Biting boss. He'll make the catch. So Jake Arlt flying out to right field for the final out of the uh, third inning. No runs, one base hit for Volga, and they leave that man stranded on second base. Let's go to the bottom of the third inning. The score remains Platt 3 and Volga 1 here on Cool 98.3. We've got a history of serving you, a history of family-owned community banking that goes back over 100 years. We grew up here. We're local. And local ownership means local decisions. It means our products are tailored to meet local needs. We take pride in our support of many local organizations and encourage community growth through charitable contributions and employee involvement. First Fidelity Bank, member FDIC. First class banking on a first name basis.
Life's an adventure filled with excitement, challenges, and achievements. Farmers Union Insurance can provide you the safety net to keep you moving toward your goals and enjoying life's rewards. With multiple locations across the state, Farmers Union Insurance agents provide quick quotes and professional services you deserve. Since 1948, Farmers Union Insurance has focused on insuring the people of South Dakota. From the most remote quarter section to the busiest intersection, Farmers Union Insurance, insuring a brighter time tomorrow. And well, Park, Tim Smith with you, not only on uh, 98.3 tonight, but also on the live ticket TV. Again, if you want to watch the uh, the games, they've got all the information there for you. Go to live ticket TV, pay-per-view, and uh, you can uh, watch those games wherever you are online. Hunter Hewitt will lead it off, the number three man in the order. High ground ball chopped down to third base. The throw across is going to be in time. One of those where you bang it into the dirt right in front of home plate. Goes way up in the air. And nothing the uh, third baseman Jake Arlts could do but wait for it to come down. But he does. And he makes the play. So Hewitt retired. Hunter Hewitt had a big hit. A two-run double. Or I should say a one-run double. Knocked in one run. Back in the, uh, the first inning when Platt scored all three of their runs. Here's a guy that also had an RBI on a little kind of a swinging bunt, Grant Lang, and he swings and misses out a big curveball. Well, the Killer Tomatoes, of course, out of the uh, the Sunshine League, where they finished next to last place, four and eight. And then, as we said, pulled the big upset in the semifinals over the number two team, Winter Cologne, which was 10 and two in league play. And then eventually, uh, of course, qualified here for the tournament. Volga plays in the Eastern Dakota League. That is kind of the biggest lead league along with the Corn Belt in the state. Here's a ball lifted to right center field, and it's going to fall in between the right fielder and center fielder for a hit. So Grant Lang has got his first hit of the, uh, the night. Talked Four about him earlier. Pitcher, Having a uh, really, really nice season, 357 batting average. So he's on with one out. And Phil Johnson will come up, hitting in the number five spot. Phil got an RBI with a uh, ground ball to the second baseman and easily brought in a runner from third as Volga's infield was not playing up at the time. Left-hander Trevor Olson looking at the runner. Fastball is outside to Johnson for ball one. Volga finished third in the Eastern Dakota League. Milbank went 9-0. and Clark went 8-1. and and Volga won seven and two. So pretty good even competition there. Down low and in the dirt, two and oh to the left handed eating Phil Johnson. Throws righty, bats lefty. Castlewood finish right behind Volga. And then Lake Norton, Clear Lake, Sisseton, Aurora, and Hamlin. Yeah, big league in that Eastern Dakota League. Here's the 2 0 pitch on the way. Johnson fouls it right back to the screen. And it's two balls and one strike. The winner of this game will come back on Monday evening. They will play the 5:30 game on Monday night. And they'll match up against the winner of our second game tonight between Lake Norton and the Renner Bullets. Johnson, ground ball right side deep in the hole. Second baseman on a knee, going to throw to first and get him. Phil is not all that fast going down the line. And they were kind of playing pretty deep. The uh, second baseman, Josh Nelson, was almost out there on the edge of the uh, the outfield grass, so he had a pretty good angle to get to that ball. So Johnson grounds out to the second baseman, second out of the inning. On the play, Grant Lang will go down to second. And it'll be up to Hayden Kuiper to see if he can keep it going here with two away. He singled back in the first inning. Takes a pitch up high for ball one. Kuiper, 235 batting average on the, uh, the year. Right-handed batter. Good lead at second base right now for Grant Lang. Not bothering to hold with him. There's a ground ball left side, and it makes its way out in the left field. I believe they're going to hold Lang. They are. He had to hold up a little bit on that uh, ground ball because it was hit toward the third baseman. And uh, Lang can't run from second to third right into that play. I mean, he's got to put the brakes on a little bit. So other than that, he probably would have scored. But uh, had to put the brakes on, and then once that ball got through the infield, he took off. But Lang will hold up at third. Second hit of the ball game for Hayden Kuiper. 
He's got two singles. And here's big Ryan Allen stepping in now, the right-handed batter. The pitch from Olsen on the way. Popped up almost straight in the air. The catcher and the first baseman. Now first baseman calling and will take it for out number three. Coming in toward the home plate area, Zach Pitts, the first baseman, has it for the final out of the inning. So Allen pops out. Platt threatens, but uh, no runs across. No runs on two base hits. There were no errors, and they leave those two men stranded on base. So we've got three innings complete in the books here at Cadwell Park. The score remains Platt 3, Volga 1 on Cool 98.3. Are you looking to steal a deal on your next vehicle? Whether you're looking for a car, truck, or SUV, shop from over 1,000 vehicles at menholtauto.com. Menholt Auto Group is a proud supporter of the South Dakota State Baseball Tournament and would like to wish good luck to all participating players and teams. Have a great game and knock one out of the park from Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda. All three stores conveniently located off I-90 Exit 60, Rapid City. It seems around here every town is a sports town, and why not? Sports were important to us growing up, and we want the same for our kids. To get involved, to compete, because that's how kids learn to lead. And why Farmers Union Insurance supports these programs. They know sports aren't just about building skill and strength, but about building character. Farmers Union Insurance. They don't just protect our community, they invest in it. Squeeze the last out, Zach Pitts, the first baseman. Will lead it off here for Bolga in the top half of the fourth inning. He bats number three spot. Austin Bicey to follow, and then uh, Tyson Sonnenberg against the right-hander Phil Johnson of Dimmick Emery, and it's fouled out of play over the first base dugout. Agronomy Plus broadcast boot. Don't forget, ensure that you have the best soil health with the help of Agronomy Plus. They've got state-of-the-art soil and water topography mapping for you. Give him a call. And here's a strike call at the knees. So correctly 0 and 2. Phil Johnson's got four strikeouts in the ball game. The delivery to Pitts. Ground ball out hit short short. Sternberg waiting, bobbles it. Oh, and he can't make the throw. Looked like a fairly routine play for Richard Sternberg. For the corner But he just couldn't pull out of his glove cleanly. Bobbled it. And it'll be an error. So Zach Pitts is on to uh, lead it off. Each team now has one error here in the uh, the game. And here's Austin Bicey, as we said, former Dakota Wesleyan basketball player. Worked in the sports information department here for a couple of years at uh, Wesleyan. And now in that same capacity up at uh, South Dakota State University. We had a nice talk about... Uh, whether or not the Jackrabbits are going to play football this year, and I'll tell you, it's kind of up in the air. Man, man, strange time, isn't it? Line shot right back up the middle, base hit, whoo, right by the uh, the baseball cap of Phil Johnson. He had to kind of lean to the side as that ball whizzed right by his ear and out into center field. Bicey's had a good year hitting the baseball, 462, and he showed it right there. Bring your program to the front spot. So now Volga's got something going. Nobody out. Runners at first and second. Pitts reaching on the error. Bicey with a single. And here's the guy who hit the home run his first time up, Tyson Sonnenberg. Left center field fence, just to the left of the 374 sign out there. And he'll take a pitch inside for ball one. So we know he's got the power. And again, there is a little breeze that is blowing out that way toward the left field. Johnson's pitch, down low in the dirt. Oh, great block behind the plate that time by Hunter Hewitt. He had a lunge outside to uh, somehow back that ball. That was a nice one or we would have had runners at second and third right now. Instead, they're still first and second with nobody out. Here's the 1-1 pitch, foul back, and it's a ball and two strikes. Parker Pitts, the guy on deck, hustling back to uh, pick up the, the foul ball, the loose baseball back at the uh, netting. Because of the COVID-19, they're not allowing any ball boys on the, uh, the field. Here's a check swing back to Johnson. He's going to go to second for an out there, and that's all they're going to get. They almost missed touching the bag. 
Hayden Kuyper just about caught it and jumped over the second base bag. He actually stopped and reached back with his left foot to make sure that uh, his toe touched the bag to get that uh, force out for the first out of the inning. They had an opportunity maybe to turn a 1-4-3 double play right there, but it just didn't uh, didn't work out. So Sonnenberg is on on the fielder's choice at first base. Zach Pitts is on at third. So runners at the corners, one away. And here is the Legion player, Parker Pitts, grounder over the mound. Sternberg flipping to second for one. The relay not in time, and a run is going to score. Zach Pitts will come home from third base, and that, that was the right play for the Killer Tomatoes. you got to try and turn the double play, and that's what Sternberg did. It was just too slowly hit to get to him. Otherwise, uh, everything was done correctly, but Hayden Kuyper's throw just not in time. So Parker Pitts hits into the short to second force out. There are two away, but now it's a three to two ball game in favor of Platt. And Johnson delivers quickly a curve called strike to Cole Gross, the right fielder. Both these pitchers working very quickly here tonight. Like that, love that when they do that. Ground ball back up through the middle. Can they get there? No, it's out into center field. Pitts is going to round second and head for third and no throw. It'll be runners at the corners again. Wasn't hit all that hard, but just in the right spot. Right past the foot of the pitcher, Phil Johnson. And then the second baseman, Hayden Kuyper, came behind second base, actually kind of slid and tried to knock the ball down. But it got past him and out into center field for the base hit for Cole Gross. So the tying run is on third with two outs, and here's Lane Lucas, the uh, catcher. Base hit single back in the uh, third inning to lead off the third inning, and he'll take a call strike from Phil Johnson. One run across on a couple of hits, and here's a ball well hit left field. That's gonna fall in for a base hit, and a run will score from third. And all of a sudden, Volga, Hitting the ball pretty well here. RBI for Lane Lucas, and we've got ourselves a tie ball game at 3-3. Three singles on the inning and then throw an error in there as well. It all started with the uh, with an error. And Bicey and Gross and Lucas all with singles, and now here's the shortstop, Nick Strasburg, the right-handed hitter. And he'll ground one up the middle again. Hyper, the second baseman, will flip to short for the out, and that'll get him out of the, uh, the inning. Good play by Hayden Kuyper. But a couple of runs on the board here for the Volga Cormorants, and they tie things up. Two runs, three base hits, one error, and they'll leave a man left on base. Three and a half innings complete here at Cadwell Park. It's Volga three, Platt three on Cool 98-3. The Gola Buffalo Casino at Lower Brule is proud of our area youth for their competitive spirit and participation in the various high school activities. It takes dedication and commitment to be the best you can be. It's all about sportsmanship and not whether you win or lose, but how you play the game. The Gola Buffalo Casino is your winning destination for great food and more ways to win. More often, our youth, our future. We at the Gola Buffalo Casino say thanks for all you do. Right now is a great time to be planning for the next growing season. Fall fertilizer application can give your crops a strong start in the spring. Because the nutrients available and needed in each field vary, your Actegra agronomist can help determine your specific nutrient needs and the benefits of applying them now. To optimize your inputs for next year's crop, contact your Actegra agronomist for details or visit actegra.com today. The Killer Tomatoes ready to come to the plate here in the bottom half of the uh, the fourth inning. We're all even up at three. Six hits for Platt, five hits for Volga. And left-hander Trevor Olson will face Derek Sokup to uh, start it out. Then Tate Sybil and Michael Beitenboss, the uh, the leadoff batter, do up third here in the inning. Beitenboss has got two of those six hits for the uh, Tomatoes and Hayden Kuyper's got two hits as well. Swing and a miss here by Sukup. First time up, he popped out to the uh, the first baseman in foul territory. Did Derek? 340 batting average on the year for the tall right-hander. 
Olsen delivers. Another high fly ball down the right field line. Foul territory. First baseman catches it and falls down and holds on. Nice job. Zach Pitts going way down the uh, the line in foul ground. First base side and uh, kind of lost his balance as the ball got to him. Fell over backwards but still held on to the ball. So Derek Sukup popping out for the second time in the ball game to the first baseman. And we've got one away here in the bottom of the fourth. And Tate Sybil will step in and swing and a miss at the first pitch. Well, both Phil Johnson and Trevor Olson have uh, shown us pretty good breaking balls tonight. And then mixing in that fastball, the slider. There's another curveball, swing and a miss, and strike two. Sybil was a strikeout victim back in the uh, the second inning. His only time up. Our third broadcast of the day here today on Cool 98. Been busy and a swing and a miss for strike three. Yeah, quick work there for... Trevor Olson gets Sybil. And right fielder Michael Bitenbaum. That is just the second strikeout of the game for Olson. But now he's got two away. Bases are empty. And Bite Moss, the right fielder, the leadoff man, will step in. Two for two. A pair of singles for Michael. And a liner, but a soft one right at the third baseman on the first pitch. Just a little bit out in front of the curveball. And pulled it right at the third baseman, kind of right off the end of the bat. So Bidenhoff lines out, and it's a very quick inning here. Platt goes down in order one, two, three in the bottom of the fourth. We head to the halfway mark. Fifth inning coming up. We're all tied up. Volga three, Platt three on Cool 98-3. It seems around here every town is a sports town. And why not? Sports were important to us growing up. And we want the same for our kids to get involved, to compete, because that's how kids learn to lead. And why Farmers Union Insurance supports these programs. They know sports aren't just about building skill and strength, but about building character. Farmers Union Insurance. They don't just protect our community, they invest in it. If you have seen our lot at Harry K, then you know we're having a record month. We are in need of vehicles, and a lot of them. That's right, we won't send you those mailers to confuse you. We'll just ask you to bring your vehicle in to have us look at it. No games, no gimmicks, just good old-fashioned honesty. Shop us first, shop us last. Either way, come see Harry K. Family, friends, and Fords, in that order. As Booth, and for the Volga Cormorants, again, the attack bird, the Cormorants. They will be at the top of the order. Josh Nelson, Jake Arlt, and Zach Pitts coming to the plate against the right-hander, Phil Johnson. And here's one lifted right over the head of the second baseman out at a right center for a base hit. He may try to stretch it into two. He is. He's got some speed. Here goes Nelson in at second base with a double. Just kept rounding as it took a while for uh, Biting Boss, the right fielder, center fielder Grand Lang to get there. Was hit just right in the right spot, right over the head of the second baseman. Good heads up running by Josh Nelson. So there's the go-ahead run for Volga, leading off here in the fifth inning, and that will bring up Jake Arlts. He has lined to shorts and flown out to right field, and he'll take a pitch down low for ball one. Again, we got four winners here so far in the tournaments. Last night, Groton defeated Madison 7-4. Del Rapids Mudcats over Plankenton 14-1. Little fake pickoff move to second base by Phil Johnson. And then earlier today, Parkston, the 5-2 winner over the Tabor Bluebirds. Matt Malloy had the big day, three hits, including a three-run homer. Ground ball to short. Sternberg bobbles it, picks it up, still throws, and safe at first base. I think he pulled him off the bag. They're probably going to have to charge another error on Richard Sternberg. That would be his second Four W in the ball game. Yep, it will be an error. And uh, Volga's got something going here in the top of the fifth inning. Now the runner had to hold on second base because the ball was hit to short right in front of him. Josh Nelson couldn't go anywhere. But now you got runners at first and seconds. Nobody out. And Zach Pitts, the number three man in the order, steps in. Pitch from Phil Johnson, curve for a strike. Pitts struck out back in the first inning. He was on on an error to start the fourth on Sternberg, and uh, that opened the gates a little bit there, and uh, 
They scored two runs. There's a fly ball, pretty deep to right field, but back on it now and waiting is Biting Boss. And nobody will be able to tag him the on the play. I'm a little bit surprised that Josh Nelson did not uh, tag up from second to third on that play. That ball was pretty deep to, uh, to right field. So Zach Pitts flies out, one away. And, we are and here is Austin Bisey. Bisey grounded out to short back in the second. And then a line shot single out into uh, center field. His second time up. Big curveball in there for a called strike. Send it right by the head of pitcher J Phil Johnson out into center field. And he'd like to do that again and break this tie. And he rips one down the left field line. It is going to be a foul ball. Oh, my, by inches. Just by inches. Bicey just out in front of that one. It actually landed on the outfield grass past the infield dirt. But just barely, barely foul. Certainly would have scored one run. Don't know about two, but uh, the guy from second would have been able to score for sure. Now two strikes on Bicey as he comes back to the uh, the plate. Right-handed batter, stands about 6-4. Ground ball hard to third, glove there. They're going to throw across, double play. Bicey hit it hard, but he hit it right at Derek Sukup at third base. Taylor made play. Sukup only had a run about two steps. Step on the third base bag and then fired across the diamond. Boy, just what Platt ordered right there. A third to first double play to get out of the inning when it really looked like Volga had something going with runners at first and second and nobody out at one time. We've reached the halfway mark of the fifth inning. Let's go to bottom of five in a tie ball game. Volga three, Platt three here on Cool 98-3. At Monument Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, we are here to help you make your comeback. Our team is standing by to diagnose and treat your injury with some of the most advanced treatment options available and same-day appointments. Monument Health practitioners work closely with our therapists and physicians in communities throughout the Black Hills with locations in Rapid City and Spearfish. Visit monument.health slash orthopedics for more information. That's monument.health slash orthopedics for more information. Harry K. Ford, a winner, is proud to be your local low price dealer. We promise to always be your most competitive local dealer on all vehicles used or new. We specialize in getting you the exact vehicle you want and can afford no matter the make and model. Those other guys don't do that. Come see why so many people have made the change to the all new Harry K. Ford in winter. Family, friends, and Fords. In that order. Well, here we go for Platt. Bottom of the fifth, Richard Sternberg, the number two man in the order, will lead it off, followed by Hunter Hewitt and then Grant Lang. And, uh, yeah, nice uh, nice double play ball there to end that inning for Platt to get out of a big jam. Grounder left side. That takes a nice second hop for the third baseman, Jake Arlton. He will make the play over to first base. So Sternberg grounding out, third to first. Richard had singled and scored back in the first inning. And uh, grounded to short, to now tomatoes, grounded to catcher, third. Hunter so one Hewitt. for three on the night. And here's the catcher, Hunter Hewitt, hitting in the number three spot. Big hit in the first inning. An RBI double that brought in Michael Beitenboss and got uh, Platt on the board. They scored all three of their runs in the first inning. And he goes after the first pitch and a ground ball right to the second baseman. And Josh Nelson will turn it into an easy out. So, boy, quick... Uh, Quick two four outs Platt. here for Platt. A ground ball to third, a ground ball to second. And now the center fielder, Grant Lang, will come to the play. Lang hitting at 357 on the, uh, the year, added to his RBI total. Back in that uh, first inning for Lang. Uh, came on an infield ground out, but still, uh, still got the run in. And he will loop one into right field for a base hit. Went after the first pitch. Oh, and now it gets by the right fielder. Here goes Lang to second base, and easily he will stand up there. Well, that'll have to be a base hit and an error. For the killer tomatoes. As it uh, just scooted right underneath the glove of the right fielder, Cole Gross. That'll be the second error of the, uh, the ball game on Volga, by the way. And the second hit of the game for Grand Lang. Pair of singles and that RBI. 
They are appealing over at first base that maybe uh, Grant Lang missed the bag as he went around. And Dan Lund says, nope. It's good. He touched it. So play on. Trevor Olson, the left-handed pitcher, will pitch to Phil Johnson. Swing and a miss. Again, Johnson bats left-handed twice. He has grounded out to the second baseman, but he did knock in a run back in the first inning with that infield ground ball. Platt with the uh, go-ahead run at second base with two outs here at the bottom of the fifth inning. Olsen ready, comes in fastball strike, 0-2 now to Phil Johnson. Well, tough loss for the Minnesota Twins today, by the way, in case you missed it. Two runs by Pittsburgh in the ninth inning. Yeah, came from behind, and they beat the Twins 6-5. Oh, here's a nice stop by the, the catcher. Pitch was way, way off the plate, and Lane Lucas jumped out there and got it to uh, keep Grand Lang at uh, second base. And to count one ball, two strikes now on, uh, on Phil Johnson. Yeah, I don't see the uh, the Twins blowing one yet this year in relief, but it, uh, it did happen this afternoon. There was also some hockey this afternoon. Minnesota Wild lose to Vancouver 3 to nothing. So now Vancouver leading that best of five playoff series two games to one over the Minnesota Wild. National Hockey League playing all of their games up in Canada, the two different sites up in Canada. Time called here as a Grand Lang is adjusting some things and uh, wants to get rid of the, whatever he had, his gloves, no, his belt. Wants a new belt. Something went wrong with the belt, Bugaboo. Jeez. Yeah, we don't want those pants sliding down, Grant. That would be a little little embarrassing here going around the bases, my man. So good idea. Calls, <laughs> calls time out. And, uh, and they get him a new belt out there. Now we're ready to go. Got it all cinched up, and he takes his lead at second base. One and two here to Phil Johnson. The pitch coming in, slow curve, strike three, call outside corner. Nice pitch by Trevor Olson. That will be just his third strikeout, but that will get him out of the fifth inning here. For Platt, they fail to score. They got the one base hit, the single by Lang, but they leave him stranded at second base. We are headed to the sixth inning in another tight game, same as we had here this afternoon. The score, Volga three, Platt three on Cool 98-3. Every home tells a story. Wherever you live, whatever your style, express yourself with Ashley Home Store. So many styles to help tell your story and create your unique dream home. Ashley Home Store. This is home. For most people, every day isn't about moving and managing money. Most of us have bigger things to tackle, jobs to do. Money shouldn't be the focus of your day. Our job is making sure it stays that way. Questions answered, time saved, confidence restored, and every day improved. First Interstate Bank, built for you. Here we go to the sixth inning. Tyson Sonnenberg, Parker Pitts, Cole Gross, for the Volga Cormorants out of the Eastern Dakota League. And we'll remind you again, when you want to know what's going on in Platte and on Charles Mix County, there's one place to go, the Platte Enterprise, as Phil Johnson's pitch is fouled down the third baseline for strike one. They got all the local happenings for you. You're never out of touch with uh, what's going on, full of information, and they would wish the best of luck, of course. And congratulate Platte Killer Tomatoes for making the tournament. Platt did not make the tournament the last two years in a row. Volga did not make the tournament last year. The year earlier they did in 2017, but uh, got beat out right away in the first round. First or second pitch, rather, up high for a ball. One ball, one strike to Tyson Sonberg. Hit a solo home run back in the second inning over the left center field fence. And he'll take a pitch down low to make it two and one. Solo shot 
in that second inning. One run came across there, and then uh, Volga tied it up in the fourth. Here's another fly ball deep to left field. They're chasing it, chasing it, and it is going to be another home run. My, oh, my. Almost exactly the same spot for Sonnenberg. And Volga has taken a 4-3 to three lead. I didn't think that ball was going to get out of here, but, man, it just jumped. A second. Solo home run for Tyson Sonnenberg. Two home runs for Tyson Sonnenberg. For the Cormorants, the designated hitter, Parker Well, we were just talking about the space and the vastness of the uh, the park here at uh, Cadwall, and it's the biggest park in South Dakota without a uh, doubt. But Tyson Sonnenberg says, so what? Here's a swing and a miss by Parker Pitts. Four to three now, Volga has the uh, the lead. Pitts, the Legion player, and he'll take a ball inside. He's popped out and uh, grounded into a fielder's choice. Yeah, that home run cleared the fence maybe about uh, 15 feet to the left of where his first home run cleared. First one was closer to the 374 sign, just left of it out in left center field. This one was a little bit further to the line. Here's a grounder out to Sternberg. He's got it. He'll make the throw. Oh, safe. High throw at first base. And they're going to say Ryan Allen off the uh, the bag had to jump up to uh, to get it. Well, that will be the third error on uh, Platt here tonight. And so run around with one away in uh, Parker Pitts. For the Cormorants, the right fielder. Cole Take that the second error on uh, Platt tonight. There are two errors on Volga as well. Yeah, so two apiece. Platt is out hitting Volga by one, seven to six, but on the scoreboard, it's four to three. Volga with the lead. Here's a bunt foul at the plate. Cole Gross tried to lay a quick one down, but uh, couldn't get it to go in fair territory. The right fielder has struck out and singled in his two times up. Platt took the lead with three runs in the first inning, but they have not been able to score since. Trevor Olson is uh, Shut him down, put zeros on the board, and uh, Volga just chipping away. Here's another bunt attempt, and this one's foul down the third baseline. Derek Sukup charging hard from third base. Puts the glove on it to make sure it stays in foul territory. So trying to move that runner along here with nobody out. Sonnenberg let off with a homer. And then Parker Pitts on on the uh, the error, and that's where he still is at first base. Cole Gross, right-handed hitter, swings and fouls it again at the plate. So two bunt fouls and then a swinging foul ball. And it'll stay, no balls and two strikes. Well, we talked about that Parkston game today. With Matt Malloy having a big day at the plate. Jeff Harris also had three hits. Here's a ground ball, hard hit. In the hole, Sternberg, he'll go to second. That's all they can get is the one out there because it was uh, too deep. Couldn't try to turn the uh, the double play, but nicely done For the by the uh, shortstop Sternberg that time. Throwing right on the money to uh, to second base. So Gross is on, on the, uh, the fielder's choice. Parker Pitts erased at second base. There's one away. And stepping in, Lane Lucas, the catcher. He's got a pair of singles tonight. One in the third, one in the fourth inning, and uh, ground ball just outside the third base bag. Foul ball by inches. Lucas's single in the fourth inning brought in one of the two runs in that fourth inning that tied the game at three, and then Volga has taken the lead on the second solo home run of the ball game by Tyson Sonnenberg here in the top half of the sixth inning. Lucas wears number 15 on his royal blue jersey, steps in, lifts a little looper out into left center field, going back, Sternberg reaches, can't get it. Now the runner trying to go from uh, first to third. He's going to be in there safely, and runners at the corners here for Volga. Boy, one of those where Lane Lucas just kind of lazily stuck the bat out there, but just got enough on it, barely getting it over the shortstop. And the outstretched glove of Sternberg as he went out on the outfield grass. Just maybe a foot over his glove. And good heads-up base running 
on the play by Cole Gross because he goes all the way from first to third. And Lucas now has got three singles in the ball game in the number eight spot in the order. And here is Nick Strasburg, Strasburg the uh, the shortstop for Volga, with a chance to add to the lead. The first pitch is outside for ball one. There's still just one out here in this inning. And runners at first and third. So if nothing else, Strasburg want to get a fly ball deep enough to the outfield to get one in. Platt hoping for a Nice double play ball here on the infield that they could uh, get out in a hurry. Phil Johnson with a little lob throw over to first base. And Strasburg still waits. Now the pitch comes in, strike at the knees. Strasburg struck out in the third inning, grounded out in the fourth inning. Number nine man in the order. Johnson, the right hander to the belt. Fastball, runner going from first, they're going to throw down. Oh, he is out by a mile at second base. And the runner from third does not make a break for the plate. Very nice throw by Hunter Hewitt. I mean, he was out by two full steps at second base. So that's the second out of the inning as Lucas is uh, gunned down. And now Strasburg waiting the, uh, the pitch. It's in there for another strike. And it's two balls and two strikes. Well, Phil Johnson can get out of this with just the uh, the home run, the one run scoring. And he does. Swing and a miss for strike three. Looked like Volga maybe had a lot more going than that. Of course, after the home run, they had a couple of guys on base, but uh, they cannot bring in another run. So Tyson Sonnenberg does the job. Second solo home run of the game. And that puts Volga back out in front. We'll go to the bottom half of inning number six. Now Volga four, plot three on Cool 98.3. At Ashley Home Store, when we say we got it, we really mean it. We've got all the popular styles for every room in your home, as well as some of the highest quality and customer ratings in the industry. Not to mention, we've also got the top mattress brands like Sealy, Tempur-Pedic, and Ashley Sleep. And payroll deduction financing available so you can take time to pay. So come in today and see why your Pierre Ashley Home Store is the top choice for everything home. Hurry in. We're located on South Garfield Avenue in Pierre. This is home. For most people, every day isn't about moving and managing money. Most of us have bigger things to tackle. Money shouldn't be the focus of your day. Our job is making sure it stays that way. Questions answered, time saved, confidence restored, and every day improved. First Interstate Bank, built for you. Visit us at firstinterstate.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Back here to the Agronomy Plus Cool 98 broadcast booth. Tim Smith with him. Sean Michaels back at the uh, the studios. In a 4-3 ball game, Volga has got the lead. I was looking at uh, my pitches thrown here. Trevor Olson, 53 pitches as he will work the bottom half of the sixth inning. Phil Johnson has thrown 75 pitches so far in the uh, game. And a curveball misses outside. Ball one here to Hayden Kuyper. Having a great night. Two for two at the plate. A pair of singles. Big swing and a miss. Single in the first. Single in the third inning for the second baseman, Kuyper. Slow curve ball. Pops it up, but it's going to come back here and out of play. Catcher giving a little bit of a look, but uh, realized. Didn't have a chance there. Starting to see people arriving for, uh, for game two. Lake Norton and the Renner Bullets gonna play next. Kuiper, really high fly ball out at right or left center field. Center fielder over and now makes the catch. For the Sonnenberg is there. The Kuiper really got Allen. underneath that one. One away here in the bottom of the six. And Ryan Allen, the first baseman, steps in. Popped out twice, once to second and once to first base. Talked about the Renner Bullets a little bit earlier made up of over 38 year old players. There's a ball well hit to left center field. That's in there for a base hit. See if he can get more than one. Uh, big turn, but no. Gonna hold on. Throw comes in for Austin Bicey out there in uh, left field. 
So Ryan Allen's first hit of the ball game. He's on with one away. And Derek Sokup will step in. That's, by the way, the eighth hit of the, uh, the ball game for Platt. And they need uh, a run to tie this thing up again here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Going through a lot of signs down at the third base coaching box. Todd Strand, the manager here of the uh, Keller Tomatoes. Here's the pitch on the way to Sook up and slow curveball in there for strike one by Trevor Olson. Yeah, Olson, uh, 57 pitches is thrown, 43 strikes. So he's been around the uh, the strike zone all the time. Here's a hard hit ball out in the left field for a base hit. Just jumped over the glove of the third baseman. It'll be a hit. Stuck his glove out there, and that ball just kind of hopped up about a foot higher than it looked like it should. And right out in the left field. So back-to-back -back singles for Allen and Sukup. And we are going to get a pinch hitter here, the way it looks, for Tate Sybil. And I believe it's going to be Mr. Kitchens from Dimmick Now batting for the Platt Killer Tomatoes, number 22, Dean Kitchens. That is correct. They picked up three players from Dimmick Emery, did Platt. Phil Johnson, who's pitching. Now Gene Kitchens, they also picked up Sam Pischke. Left-handed batter, Gene Kitchens, veteran, veteran player, and he'll take a curveball for a called strike. Uh, having an opportunity to play with his son, Drew Kitchens, in amateur baseball over at Dimmick Emery. That is always fun. Doesn't happen very often. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Swing and a foul at the plate. And yeah, Gene's always been a pretty doggone good contact hitter, and that's what Platt needs here. One out, runners at first and second. And they trail by a run, 4-3. to three. Trevor Olson trying to work out of a jam here. Looks at that runner at second. The pitch to Kitchens right off the end of the bat, fouled back again. Just barely caught a piece of that uh, of that curveball. Again, he is batting in the spot of Tate Sybil. Sybil was the left fielder, so uh, not sure what we'll have defensively coming up, but we'll watch it for you. Olson ready. Pitch to Kitchens, ground ball up through the middle. Will it make its way? No, second baseman, but he's going to throw it away. Everybody is going to be safe. Base is loaded. Nice try by Josh Nelson, the second baseman, out behind the second base bag, but as he's laying on the ground, he tries to flip it to the shortstop covering and threw it wide at second base. They're going to call that an error. That's a tough play, but they scored an error. So Kitchens is on at first. Ryan Allen goes to third. Derek Suk up to second. One out. And Michael Beitenboss can be a big hero here. First pitch. Strike call in the inside corner. Beitenboss has had a great night. Two singles. And then he went out last time up. But he lined a shot right at the third baseman. Hit it hard. Olsen delivers. Swing and a miss. 0-2 oh to Beitenboss. Look. Almost like he was a little bit. Over anxious that time on that swing. Just want to make contact. Down by a run here. You got a runner at third. Pitch on the way. There's the base hit to left field. One run will score. They're going to wave the second runner around. Here comes the throw. Not in time. Kitchens is going to try to go to third. And he is out at third. But two runs score on the base hit by Biken Boss. And the Platt Killer Tomatoes are back out in front by a run here in this ball game. And then Kitchens tried to go all the way from first to third on the throw to home, but they throw back to third, get him out there for the second out of the inning. But again, Platt now grabs the lead back. It's a 5-4 ball game here in the bottom half of the, uh, the sixth inning. And coming to the plate, Richard Sternberg. They've still got only one out on the scoreboard, but there should be two outs. Pitch by Olsen, and that's going to be downstairs for ball one. Again, Mike Sardar up behind the plate from Huron. Dan Lund, and also on third base, Dave Edler. Same uh, crew that worked our first game of the day, the morning game, the Parkston game today. Pitch down low and in the dirt. 
Two balls and no strikes. Now they fix the uh, the scoreboard. Two outs up there. But a runner still at second base in Biting Boss. The pitch to Sternberg coming in, fouls it, rolls over toward the uh, first base dugout. Sternberg, one hit tonight, single back in the first inning, came in, scored a run. Then he's grounded to short, grounded to third, his other two times up. Good walking lead by Biting Boss out at second base. Pitch on the way. Oh, this is hit hard. Is it fair or is it foul? Foul ball. It's out of the ballpark. <laughs> Richard Sternberg turned on one, but just pulled it foul, and it would have been a home run. Maybe 10 feet fouled on the left field line. I mean, you knew the thing was out of here when he hit it, but it just did not stay fair. So it's two and two, the count. Here's the pitch to him up high. We'll go full. And if Sternberg gets on, you got Hunter Hewitt, the catcher, waiting on deck. Five to four. Platt has grabbed the lead back here with two runs in the sixth inning. Olsen delivers. Fly ball, left field. Just about right at Austin Bicey, and he'll take it for the third out of the inning. So Sternberg flies out, but Platt gets the lead back again. They score two runs on three base hits. The big one, the two-run single by Michael Bottenboss. Bottenboss, rather. There was also one error on Volga in the inning. We are headed to the seventh inning here, State Amateur Baseball Tournament. It's now Platt 5, Volga 4 on Cool 98.3. How do we solve our patients' hard-to-solve medical problems? Our doctors and specialists collaborate, sharing their vast knowledge and Mayo Clinic's unique expertise. It's this working together that helps solve our patients' hard-to-solve medical problems. Monument Health, proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. As a Venture Communications customer, you're ready for tomorrow. Where you live, the world's at your fingertips through a fast and reliable fiber optic internet connection. You can choose the RushNet broadband speed you want, all the way up to a gigabit. And your own team of technical experts are ready to help 24-7. Change your world with RushNet high-speed internet. Be ready for tomorrow. Get connected. Call Venture Communications today. Day. Three hits for Malloy, Matt, including the big three-run home run, fifth inning. Jeff Harris, three hits. Jake Weber started, worked into the seventh inning, and then Brady Knowles came in, and Brady Knowles finished up. A uh, nice four-hit day for both Rothschadel, by the way, for uh, Tabor, and then two hits apiece for Bryce Sosinski, who came in in relief. And Bailey Sage, pickup player from Freeman, also had two hits in the ball game. Here's Phil Johnson, the uh, first pitch to the leadoff man, Josh Nelson. Ball one, comes in with a fastball. There's a strike on the inside corner. Nelson with a double, a strikeout, and a ground down. And he's three times up. Checks the swing. Did he go? Barely not. Nope. B ball two, two and one the count. Then we'll talk about our second game here, Alexandria and Lesterville. What a ball game that was. Here's a breaking ball, hits the inside corner. Nelson didn't like the call. He thought it was inside, but it's going to be two balls and two strikes. Johnson throwing a nice uh, nice breaking ball here tonight. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Fastball jams him off the fist. Foul ball. Well, Alexandria jumped out in front 3-1 to one with three runs in the, uh, the second inning. Then it became three to two. Check swing down low, full count here now to Nelson. And then it sure looked like maybe Alexandria was home free when they tacked on some runs. Two in the sixth, one in the, uh, the seventh. And they led six to two over Lesterville. Here's another foul to the right-hand side. Off the bat of Josh Nelson. So six to two was the score. And then all of a sudden the top of the eighth inning, here comes Lesterville. 
Five runs, six base hits. Here's a ground ball to the right side. First baseman on a knee, Ryan Allen's got it. He'll go step on the bag for out number one. And Josh Nelson is retired. With one away, Jake Arlts, the third baseman, will step in. Been on on an error, then he's lined out and flown out to right field a couple of times. So, yeah, big shocker. Top of the eighth, all of a sudden, Lesterville grabs a 7-6 to six lead, and it looks like maybe the uh, defending champion Angels are going out in the first round of the tournament as we get a called strike here to Arlts. But nope, not the case, because the bottom of the ninth inning, Jordan Gow, Chris Merrick lead off with uh, singles, and now we're going to get a hit batsman. Jake Arlt hit in the uh, the left arm by the pitch from Phil Johnson, so he'll go down to first base with one out. We'll bring up the first baseman, Zach Port Pitts. Loga, the first baseman, Zach now, Gow and Merrick single. Merrick's was a bunt single, kind of misplayed by Lusterville. Nobody covered second base. And then hit by a pitch was the catcher, Michael Schotmeyer. And then one batter later, the hero, Jared Zins, the number nine man in the order, lifts a single to left field, bringing in two runs, a walk-off two-run single, and Alexandria pulls it out of the fire, eight to seven. Here's a pop coming back out of play for strike one to Zach Pitts. 14 hits for Alexandria, 15 hits in the ballgame for Lusterville. Tyson Gow. Just didn't have his, uh, his A stuff today, man. They hit him hard. They had 14 of their 15 hits off Tyson Gow. I don't think that's ever happened before. There's a called strike, and it's 0-2 now to Mr. Arlts. Man on first, one out here in the top half of the seventh inning for Volga. And Johnson's going to miss outside with this one. For Alexandria, a four-hit day for Jordan Gow. Four singles. Two hits for Peyton Smith, a couple of RBIs. Jed Schmidt, a couple of hits in an RBI. And, of course, Jared Zins, the winner, just one hit, but uh, knocked in the two runs. Grounder toward third. Kuiper's going to go to second. Gets the out there, not in time at first. That was a nice play by the third baseman, Derek Soup Soka. For the Cormorant, the left fielder. Austin he made a quick play out of that. A two-bouncer. Hustled over, stepped on the bag, and really made a gun throw from third over to second base. I was wondering if he's even going to have a chance to get the uh, the lead runner, but he did get him there. So Pitts is on with the fielder's choice at first base, but there are now two outs, and here's Austin Bicey, the cleanup hitter, and a curveball in there for a called strike. Talked about Austin several times here. And again, the... Uh, the television star from the College World Series here of a year ago. Left field. Here comes a home run. Holding a beer in his left hand, reaches out, catches the home run in his right hand, and then promptly chugs the beer down. Like a college kid should do, right? Ground ball slowly hit the second base, and they're going to throw out Austin Bisey. Hyden Kuiper making the, the play. So for Volga, top half of the seventh inning. No runs. They had one man on. He was hit by the pitch, but he couldn't get any further than first base. It is seventh inning stretch time here at Cadwell Park. Your score, Platt 5, Volga 4 on Cool 98.3. As a Venture Communications customer, you're ready for tomorrow. Where you live, the world's at your fingertips through a fast and reliable fiber optic internet connection. You can choose the RushNet broadband speed you want, all the way up to a gigabit. And your own team of technical experts are ready to help 24-7. Change your world with RushNet high-speed internet. Be ready for tomorrow. Get connected. Call Venture Communications today. Are you looking to steal a deal on your next vehicle? Whether you're looking for a car, truck, or SUV, shop from over 1,000 vehicles at menholeauto.com. Menhol Auto Group is a proud supporter of the South Dakota State Baseball Tournament and would like to wish good luck to all participating players and teams. Have a great game and knock one out of the park from Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda. All three stores conveniently located off I-90 Exit 60, Rapid City. Tim Smith with you, Cadwell Park. 
in your truly locally owned and operated Agronomy Plus broadcast booth. Hunter, Hunter Hewitt. Platt will come to the plate, bottom of the seventh inning. Hunter Hewitt, the catcher, three man in the order. He'll be followed by Grant Lang, Phil Johnson. You got good bats coming up right here. The hits are even, nine apiece, but Platt leads in the run department. It's a five to four ball game. Two runs last inning on three base hits. Did the job for the Killer Tomatoes. The big hit, the two run single by Biton Boss. First pitch missing. One ball and no strikes. The count here to Hunter Hewitt. Doubled and knocked in a run back in the first inning and then has grounded out twice. And there's a curve in for a strike. Two and one. Trevor Olson, 72 pitches right now, has gone the uh, the distance. On the other side, Phil Johnson has thrown 93 pitches, and there's a swing and a miss on a high fastball. And now it's two and two here to uh, Hunter Hewitt. The right-hander, number 25 on the bright red jersey. And this one's down low in the dirt, so it'll be a full count, three and two. Looks like maybe the breeze has just picked up a little bit. The flag is blowing harder than it has all day, and it's straight from home plate out to left field. So a south wind. And, uh, yeah, for the first time, we're kind of seeing the flag all, all out, not just ripples in the flag. Here's a check swing, and it's ball four. Hunter Hewitt's going to draw a leadoff walk here at the bottom of the seventh. The center fielder, Grant Lang. And Grant Lang will step in. Two hits on the night for Grant, pair of singles. Then he actually got his RBI back in the uh, the first inning on a little uh, swinging bunt out in front of home plate. They had to throw the ball to first, and the runner came in to score from third. Left-handed hitter Lang at 357 and takes the first pitch inside for ball one. Because we talked about that Alexandria 8-7 win over Lusterville. It's a uh, Sunshine League matchup in the second round. Parkston and Alexandria. And that will be the late game on Sunday night, the 7.30 ball game, following Groton and El Rapids Mudcats. And then the winner of this game plays on Monday night, the 5.30 game. Pitch on the way. Fouled out of play, left side. Going to make the uh, the parking lot over the third Everybody base dugout. Well, by the way, I did get a couple of those world famous Exchange Club onion burgers here in between the uh, the sessions. We had about an hour and fifteen minutes in between, and uh, I'm giving you two thumbs up. If I had three, I'd give you three, but mm, good stuff. Foul straight back into the backstop. Stays one ball, two strikes here to uh, to Grant Lang with Phil Johnson. On deck. And we may actually be getting a change here. I see uh, I see a new number on deck. It looks like Sam Pischke maybe going to pinch hit for Phil Johnson. Pitches outside on a fastball. Two and two now. Hewitt staying at first base. Yeah, that's the way it looks. So Phil Johnson might be, uh, might be done for the night. Working through seven innings. We said he's... Almost 100 pitches, 94 pitches. Olsen looks at the runner at first. Here's the pitch on the way. Ground ball right at the second baseman. Going to go to second, and he's got the out there, or is he off the bag? He's off the bag, but now they've got the runner in a rundown between second and third. They'll put the tag on. Well, the throw got there in time to beat the runner to second, but it pulled the, uh, the shortstop off the bag. Nick Strasburg couldn't keep his toe on the bag. The problem was Hunter Hewitt had such a full head of steam that he ran past second base please. and couldn't put the, uh, the brakes on. The and then they get him in a quick little rundown 15. between second and third and tag out Hunter Hewitt. And on the fielder's choice, Grant Lang is on at first base. It's a one out runner on first. And here is Sam Pischke gonna pinch hit. Left-handed hitter from Dimmick Emery, where's number three. And he'll take a call strike on the first pitch from the left-hander, Trevor Olson, who's now up to 82 pitches in the game. Three strikeouts, one walk given up by Olson, And he trails five to four. 
Here's a ground ball right through the box, out towards second. They'll step on the bag for one, and it's a double play ball. Smart move by the pitcher, Trevor Olson. He could have stuck his glove out and caught that one, but he knew it was headed out towards second base where his shortstop was waiting. And all Nick Strasburg had to do was pick it up, step on the bag, and throw to first for the double play. So that takes care of Sam Pischke, and it takes care of Platt here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Our score remains the same. It's the Platt Killer Tomatoes, five, the Volga Cormorants, four, here on Cool 98.3. It seems around here every town is a sports town, and why not? Sports were important to us growing up, and we want the same for our kids. To get involved, to compete, because that's how kids learn to lead. And why Farmers Union Insurance supports these programs. They know sports aren't just about building skill and strength, but about building character. Farmers Union Insurance. They don't just protect our community, they invest in it. If you have seen our lot at Harry K, then you know we're having a record month. We are in need of vehicles, and a lot of them. That's right, we won't send you those mailers to confuse you. We'll just ask you to bring your vehicle in to have us look at it. No games, no gimmicks, just good old-fashioned honesty. Shop us first, shop us last. Either way, come see Harry K. Family, friends, and Fords, in that order. Go to left field. And it looks like Grant Lang is going to be our uh, pitcher for Platt as well. Again, as a pitch hit for Bill Johnson. So Grant Lang is going to come on here, pitch the uh, the eighth inning, try to hold on to this one-run lead for the Platt Killer Tomatoes. Now, the first guy he's going to face has got two home runs tonight. <laughs> so he'll get a test right away. Tyson Sonnenberg will be the first guy he faces. Our third game of the day coverage on Cool 98 uh, today. Oddly enough, we do not have any of the games tomorrow on Friday. It will be Garrettson and South Central at 11 a.m. Winner, Cologne and Flandreau should be a great matchup. Flandreau's won like six in a row. They're red hot at the end of the year, and we know after watching Winter Cologne in the Sunshine League how good they are. Clear Lake and Hartford Humboldt, the Gamecocks, will play at 5.30 and then Irene and Redfield in the final game tomorrow night. But don't forget, if you can't get to the ballpark here and we don't have the coverage, live ticket TV. Check it out, the pay-per-view option for you. And you can watch them right on your own home computer. Live ticket TV. Grand Lang completing his warm-up tosses here for Platt, the uh, the new pitcher. See what we got on the uh, the stat sheet for Grant. Not many innings pitched, just nine and a third all year long. One win against no losses. But how about 25 strikeouts? Ooh, man, that is a uh, a big number. And he has not given up a run, not one earned run in uh, nine innings of pitching. So nice numbers for Grant Lang. Let's see what he can do here, trying to hold on to the one-run lead. Here's Sonnenberg stepping in, the right-handed hitter. Lang, the right-handed pitcher. And on the way, high fly ball to right field. Coming up, still coming up hard, diving and making a great catch. Biting boss out in right field. Spectacular. Rolls on the ground and then comes up holding the ball in his glove in the webbing of the glove. Beautiful. And not only was he fighting the uh, the ball, he's fighting the sun because the uh, right fielder right now is looking into that sun. getting pretty low in the sky right in your face. Great play by Michael Beitenbaugh. One out. And that's a big guy to get out, Mr. Sonnenberg. Two solo home runs tonight, and then on on a fielder's choice as well. Here's Parker Pitts, the designated hitter, Legion player. He's popped out, grounded out a couple of times. Curve ball from Lang in there for a strike. Quickly 0-2 on Parker Pitts. We're getting late in this one, top half of the eighth inning. Platt holding on to the 5-4 lead. 
Fastball, swing and a miss. Got him, strike three. Big time heat by Mr. Lang right there. Just threw it by him. And now two away here in the eighth inning. Well, again, when you, uh, when you come up with stats like that, nine well, and well, a third. Right innings of work and uh, you have not given up any anything as far as runs and you got 25 strikeouts uh, this is the guy you want on the mound to try and finish off this ball game two away base is empty and Cole Gross the right fielder right hander steps in and Hart Band slider right stays up high for, for ball one well our teams for game two are uh, gathering behind the dugouts on either side, Lake Norton and the uh, the Renner Bullets. Fastball coming in, and there's a strike on the outside corner. Yeah, Lang can uh, can bring it with a little juice on it, no doubt about that. In our second game here, Lake Norton. Well, swing and a miss for strike two. First of all, we're going to talk about their... Uh, their league a little bit uh, for you. They did not have a great showing. They were only three and six in the Eastern Dakota, and that's the same league that this Volga team is in, and they were seven and two on the year. But they had a good district tournament, so they make it. And here's another swing and a miss. Two strikeouts of the three men he faces here in the eighth inning. Grant Lang just coming in and throwing smoke right now. He gets pits and gross on strikes. That takes care of Volga in the eighth inning. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Platt still holding the one-run lead. It's Platt 5, Volga 4 on Cool 98.3. Shop local with Burke and Gregory Building Centers, your hometown hardware stores, specializing in everything from finding the right drill bit to building your dream home. The crew at Burke and Gregory Building Centers take pride in customer service and are always available to help with any project, big or small. They offer top-of-the-line flooring and cabinetry, a large inventory of rental items, quality Pittsburgh paint, and so much more. Follow them on Facebook and shop online anytime at bgbuildingcenter.com. We've got a history of serving you. A history of family-owned community banking that goes back over 100 years. We grew up here. We're local. And local ownership means local decisions. It means our products are tailored to meet local needs. We take pride in our support of many local organizations and encourage community growth through charitable contributions and employee involvement. First Fidelity Bank. Member FDIC. First class banking on a first name basis. Olson, it's the uh, the Legion guy, Parker Pitts, who just batted here this last half inning. Will come in. So let me give you some final numbers on uh, both of the the pitchers here tonight. Grant Lang coming in for Phil Johnson. Of course, this last inning, Johnson finished throwing 94 pitches, gave up the four runs, gave up nine hits. Maybe Phil had five strikeouts, and he didn't walk anybody. Texas. That was a, a key. Trevor Olson goes the full seven innings. For Volga, he throws 86 pitches. Also gives up nine hits, just like Johnson, but gives up one more run, five runs. Three of those are earned. Three strikeouts for Olson, and he did walk one batter. So those are your final numbers on the starting pitchers. And now Hayden Kuiper steps in for Platt, bottom of the eighth. They're hoping this is the uh, the last time that they will come to the plate in this game. Three outs away from a win here. Pitts delivers, nice fastball, swing and a miss. Quickly 0-2 on Hayden Kuiper. Kuiper's got two hits on the night, pair of singles. Flew out to center field his other time up. And this one's a pop-up out into short center field. Long run for the center fielder, second baseman going back. And it falls in. He can't get to it. Back to the infield. Reached the glove out, but uh, it's going to go as a sky-high base hit. The third Fans hit of the night of for seconds. Hayden Kuyper. Yeah, just not uh, not enough time for Sonnenberg, the center fielder, to run all the way in on that one. And it probably ended up about 20, 25 feet out on the grass in center field. And here's Ryan Allen, now the first baseman. He'll file it back to the screen. Well, there's an insurance run for Platt if they can get this uh, get this runner around the bases. 
And uh, six to four would seem to be a lot more comfortable than five to four right now. So that's a big runner on at first base in Kuiper. Allen with one hit tonight and swings and misses. Now he's behind 0-2. On Parker Pitts, the, uh, the Legion player, and he's throwing really well. Goes to the stretch, and this one's off the foot of uh, Mr. Allen and rolls back out toward the mound, but right away home plate umpire Mike Sarda signaling. It's a foul ball, it's a dead ball, so it'll stay at no balls and two strikes. Of course, if the Killer Tomatoes hold on to win this game, we will be right back here on Monday night at 5.30 to uh, continue to follow them. Ground ball hit to the right side, slowly hit. Second baseman's got it. His only play is to first, and they'll make it there. So Allen is retired. Hayden Kuyper goes from first to second base on the ground up. So there he is in scoring position. If Platt can get another uh, hit down here, Maybe they can uh, up that lead to two runs for Grand Lang going to the uh, to the ninth inning, the relief pitcher. Derek Sukup will step in, one hit, and then has popped out a couple of times. The first pitch to him, a curveball outside for ball one. The hitting has been pretty even. Ten hits for Platt, nine hits for Volga. Volga does have four errors, though, in the field. That has uh, hurt him. Ooh, this one backs Suk up out of the way. Fastball inside for a, a ball. But where it really counts, of course, is in the uh, in the run department where it's 5-4 to four Platt. Those two runs in the sixth inning, giving them the lead back. Fastball, that's in there for a strike. Two and one to count to Suk up. Gene Kitchens swinging a bat on deck. He uh, pinch hit last time around for... Tate Sybil and was on on an error by the way it was Kitchens now a check swing but I think he went yep it is a strike strike two so now a two ball two strike count here to Derek Suka with Kuiper out at second base and one away we're in the bottom of the eighth inning Platt trying to become the fifth winner here at the tournament pitch on the way swing and a miss runners going to third and they throw it down the left field line Picking himself up is Kuiper. He will come in to score. There's the insurance run. So Derek Sukup strikes out, but Kuiper stealing third base. And the catcher, Lane Lucas, airmailed one out down the left field line. That is error number five of the ball game against Volga. And now Platt's looking in pretty good shape here. A two-run lead, three outs away from a win. And Gene Kitchens will step in, and he'll send a ground ball out towards second base. Very slowly hit Josh Nelson with the easy play at first. That will retire the side. But a big run comes across here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Kuiper singled, got himself all the way around the bases. So we'll go to the top of the ninth inning. Last chance here for Volga. It's Platt 6, Volga 4 on Cool 98.3. Life's an adventure filled with excitement, challenges, and achievements. Farmers Union Insurance can provide you the safety net to keep you moving toward your goals and enjoying life's rewards. With multiple locations across the state, Farmers Union Insurance agents provide quick quotes and professional services you deserve. Since 1948, Farmers Union Insurance has focused on insuring the people of South Dakota. From the most remote quarter section to the busiest intersection, Farmers Union Insurance, insuring a brighter time tomorrow. The Gola Buffalo Casino at Lower Brule is proud of our area youth for their competitive spirit and participation in the various high school activities. It takes dedication and commitment to be the best you can be. It's all about sportsmanship and not whether you win or lose, but how you play the game. The Gola Buffalo Casino is your winning destination for great food and more ways to win. More often, our youth, our future. We at the Gola Buffalo Casino say thanks for all you do. Now or never for the Cormorants of Volga. They need two runs to tie up this ball game, three to take the lead. And they're going to have to do it against Grand Lang, who's coming in relief of starter Phil Johnson. 
and he looked pretty good last inning. Got a great catch in right field to uh, start things out by Biting Boss, but then Leading struck up. out the next two guys he faced. And here we go, Lane Lucas, the, the catcher. He's got three hits on the night, three singles, batting in the number eight spot, but he's got that big average, 474 batting average. Kind of strange. Uh, he's down in the number eight spot, but uh, yeah, he's hit the ball. So Lang, the right-hander, ready to go. And here's the first pitch on the way. Slider in there for a strike. Nick Strasburg, the shortstop, is due up next. And then the top of the order, and Josh Nelson here in the top half of the ninth inning. Lang working out of the stretch, even though, of course, nobody on base. And this one's going to miss up high. One ball and one strike. Platt spread their runs out tonight, that's for sure. They got three in the first inning, and we get a swing and a miss for strike two. Fastball down at the knees. Yeah, it took a three to nothing lead. And then Volga fought back with one in the second and two in the fourth, tied the ball game at three. They actually then took the four to three lead as here's a little pop up to the right side. Trouble, Biting Boss coming up makes the catch. This one a lot easier than the catch he made last inning. Didn't have to dive for it. He was playing a shallow right field. It was Biting Boss and uh, takes that fly ball off the bat of Lane Lucas coming in full speed toward the infield. Platt two outs away from advancing into the uh, second round of the tournament. Your attention, please. Now batting for Volga, number 10, Noah Pitts. And we're going to get a pinch hitter. You might have heard Joe Van Gore right there. New man coming in, Noah Pitts will be the, uh, the pinch hitter. And the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike. They list him at just a 160 batting average on the year. Left-handed batter. He'll bat for... Strasburg, the shortstop. Strasburg did not have a hit in three trips. Lang ready, delivers, swing and a miss, strike two. And that's all Grand Lang needs to do. Throw strikes, don't want to give up any freebies. No free passes here, make him hit the ball. He got a two-run lead. Grand has the sign, comes in, swing and a miss, strike three, and there are two away. So now Lang has struck out three of the five batters he has faced here in relief. And he needs one more. Josh Four Nelson, the, the leadoff order. man. And second baseman, Josh Nelson. Nelson with one hit, a double back in the fifth inning. Grounded out a couple of times and struck out. Right-handed hitter against the right-hander, Grant Lang. Here's the set and the first pitch. That's going to be a little bit down low for ball one. Platt with... Six runs, ten hits. Volga, four runs, nine hits. But they also have five errors in the ballgame. The 1-0 pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Boy, he is throwing some hard stuff at the plate right now. Is Grand Lang. And we told you, he has not given up an earned run. Now, he's only pitched 11 innings, but has not given one up yet. Here's the 1-1 pitch on the way to Nelson and fouled back to the screen. One strike away from the Killer Tomatoes coming back here on Monday night at 5.30. Well, you plot fans, make your plans right now to be here. Got a good group up here tonight, but uh, hey, you want to see some more. One more strike for Grand Lang here. Two outs, nobody on base, top of the ninth inning. And here's the pitch coming in, curveball. Ooh! <laughs> it's a ball. I don't know where it missed. Maybe a little bit inside. That was really a, really a good pitch right there. And I don't know how Nelson let that one go. Two balls, two strikes to count to him. Lang sets himself, has the, uh, the sign from Hunter Hewitt. And swing and a miss, and that'll do it. Nice relief job by Grant Lang. Strikes out four of the six batters he faces in the eighth. 
in the ninth inning. And the Platte Killer Tomatoes move to the second round of the tournament with a 6-4 to four win here over the Volga Cormorants tonight. Again, 5.30 Monday night. Platte will play either Lake Norton or the over-38 team, the Renner Bullets, coming up on Monday evening. 6-4 again, your final. We will take a quick break. We'll come back with all the final line score, wrap the action up for you in just one minute here on Cool 98.3.